Hi, this is a quick video because we do get asked um, questions about our pH sensor. So I've taken a few of these questions and try to put them all together and get them answered um, in a single um, sort of video response. Um, so one of the questions is, is the ZP um, screen printed sensor um, single use or can it be reused? And maybe comment on the shelf life and operational life of the sensor. So the quick answer is um, the ZP pH sensor. Um, we recommend single use because it makes for a much better user experience. If you're trying to make a product and you're trying to make a product that's reusable, then you're basically going to have to ask the client or the customer to kind of clean the sensor every time. So that's a kind of decision for you. Um, but actually, the sensors are reusable. And the reason I can say that is because obviously in this example, we've got one sensor in a solution and we take it from pH um, 2 stepwise down to pH 9, then we take it back to pH 2, then to pH 9, and then back to pH um, 2. So um, the question was, um, is it single use or can it be reused? So we do actually reuse them quite a bit. But if you're trying to test something, you know, like a food or something like that, which could end up just basically contaminating the sensor, then from a product perspective and a user perspective, you're probably better off recommending single use. Um, but for an R&D perspective, then you can you can reuse the sensors. Um, shelf life. So we do have an official um, shelf life, which is basically six months. Um, now, this is because we're being conservative um, because it, it's only six months that we've kind of tested out to. Now, we think that they actually last a lot longer than that. But the official answer is um, six months. Um, yeah, six months. So. That's in the um, data sheet. Operational life is a different kind of question. So clearly here, we've operated this sensor for about 30 minutes, um, 16, about 1,600 seconds. Um, sensor's perfectly fine. So operational life, um, you probably have to buy it and try it in your application to really answer that question, because how long a sensor will operate is depending um, really on how you're using it and how well you're, how, you know, how you use it. So um, operation really depends on, on you and the solutions that you put it in or the applications you put it in. I mean, if you put it in a very corrosive media, then its operational life is quite short, well, could be quite short. Um, if you put it in quite benign solutions, like pH 7 and stuff like that, it could operate for quite a while. So the operation, so the shelf life is officially six months, though I think it's longer. The operational life really depends on on you and your application. And what is the pH range of the screen printed sensor? So that's again um, in the um, you can see it in our data that we've tested between in this example pH two and pH nine. So we can be confident about that, but we can also extend it out to pH ten approximately because we've also tested. I mean, this data, I can see that we've um, tested up to about, or down to about, yeah, up to pH 9.95. So I would say approximately pH 2 to pH 10 we've tested. Um, and if you want to extend it, then you probably have to uh, purchase one and test it beyond those um, kind of ranges. Um, what is the necessary power for using the sensor? pH sen the pH sensor itself doesn't require power. You only need power in your electronics so that you can measure the voltage, maybe turn the voltage into pH through calibration and display it. Now, so the quick answer is the pH sensor doesn't intrinsically need power. You don't need to apply voltage to measure voltage. It generates a, it generates a small voltage. And if you want to know what that voltage is, obviously just look at the, again, just look at our raw data and you get a sense of, um, kind of voltages that it spits out, that's 200 millivolts and that's zero. So um, it doesn't require powering itself, but you need the power for your electronics. And I think uh, if you're interested, you probably have to kind of watch one of our webinars about this. Um, it's quite a long webinar, I sort of, sort of apologize for that. Uh, but we do um, have a webinars that um, detail all sorts of, um, in fact, the wrong webinar here. Um, I will just go to this webinar. So it's very important to go for the electrochemical biosensor and demonstrator one. 
So I've just, this is the webinar. And in this webinar, um, we have we have a whole section on potential metric sensors. So it's definitely worth um, watching that um, webinar. So I will um, pause that and go to here. Now, when you're using um, let me do maybe, yeah, what's the necessary power for the sensor? The sensor doesn't require power. You need power, though, to read, you know, effectively. It's going to give out a voltage. You're going to measure that voltage through a high impedance mm -hmm. circuit so that you don't draw any current. And um, you'll need the power for your circuit, not for the sensor itself. Um, what's the measurement time of the pH sensor? So that, um, if we look at our raw data again, there's really two. Um, there's two phases in the signal. So here's the plateau. We're at pH 7 here, and we change the pH to pH 9.95. There's an immediate drop, and then there's a second phase where it reaches a plateau. So most traditional pH sensors, they basically wait to measure the voltage at the end of this equilibrium. So every time you see there's an immediate change, which is proportional to the change in pH, and then there's a second phase where it takes longer to um, reach the final voltage. So zero and peacock at the moment, we do most of our, if, if we're using these sensors, we kind of, we do the pH change as an immediate response and then we wait for the signal to settle. I would recommend for some people that actually, they try and figure out if they can use the immediate change, because that takes place over a, literally a few seconds. And if, and if they actually, they don't need to wait for the plateauing. Because if you need to wait for this plateauing, then that can take something like um, 200 seconds, whereas the immediate change is just a few seconds. But in order to, do, to figure out if you can use the immediate change or you need to wait for the plateauing, you really have to do the, the work. And if you don't want to do the work or you, you can't, then ZP... Um, can do that kind of characterization, characterization for you as a as a paid for program. Um, let me have a quick. So the quick answer to the um, the question is is what's the measurement time of the pH sensor? The worst case is it could be two hundred seconds. If you're smart and you do the cat, um, you do the characterization correctly, you might only be a few seconds. But you can see that we got two phases of signal: immediate change and then the second phase, which is takes longer to um, to reach plateau. Um, the pH sensor is potentiometric. How should I connect to it? See, unlike an unlike a amperometric sensor, which is a glucose sensor, is an example of an amperometric sensor. Um, you don't need to connect to all three pads. We physically make a connection to all three pads, but we in fact only use the um, sensing pad here and the reference pad here, and we literally just measure the voltage between these two pads. Again, I would refer you to um, those webinars, um, and in particular this one, um, to kind of understand um, pH sensors um, a little bit better. As I say, it's actually in there a bit, so I would definitely watch that um, video. Um, now, how do I connect to it? So at Zimmer and Peacock, um, we have a connector that we've made for these things. Um, you can take a look at it um, on the website. Um, we sell them in packs, so it's kind of up to you. Um, if you want to sort of avoid, you know, incurring too many costs with us, um, then I would recommend you take a look at that. But we don't, we won't support this one. Um, you know, we'll support our own connector. But um, so you can either go for these kind of connectors. These are, um, you could, there's also a data sheet up there, so you can try and. Take a look at that and you know maybe you'll even end up sourcing it you'll yourself but we do have connectors on the website so that's how you connect to a um, pcb board so again uh, these sensors can be reused whether you really reuse them with real customers i doubt it because you're going to have to teach the customers how to clean these kind of electrodes and it seems to just defeat the entire point of having a kind of low-cost ph sensor the pH range, we've tested it from 2 to 10. Well, I should have also mentioned um, shelf life, we say six months. I think that's a bit conservative. It's probably longer than that. Operational life, we've run these sensors for you know continuously for about 30 minutes. Um, and
and maybe you should um, you, you possibly have to characterize that yourself in your own application. Um, you don't need to power these sensors, but you do need to power your electronics. Um, the measurement time, depending on if you just use the first phase in the signal where it does the immediate jump, that will be a few seconds. If you wait for the second phase where it plateaus, that can be 200 seconds. Um, you can connect to it just through the two electric, the two pads here. You don't need the third pad. You do not need this third pad. You just need this pad and this pad. And we do have some connectors. And if you have a look around there, you'll be able to sort of figure out maybe your own connector or use one of our connectors. Okay, thanks very much.